All right, hey, Honors Chemistry. This is gonna be the video walkthrough of our activity, Distinguishing Ionic, Molecular, and Atomic Solids. So we've spent a bit of time naming and writing and drawing formulas for ionic and molecular compounds. Now we're gonna see what they look like on a molecular level or um, what they look like if I see them in certain instruments. So in this activity, we're gonna be looking at different types of solid structure and identifying them and looking at some patterns. Um, and we're gonna start with looking at the X-ray crystallography image of water. So um, you have this handout that's linked in the documents as to our activity. You also have this handout that says solid structure handout. And so um, this is something that we would be doing in class, but now I have all of the images and whatnot right into this handout. So it's a two page handout, or you could do back and front. We're gonna start with the front, which is part one, X-ray crystallography. So here is the X-ray crystallography of water. And what this means is there's a specific, special type of instrument, um, and it shines light on water. I'm just gonna adjust my camera a little bit. It, it shines a bit of light and energy onto water, and we're able to see water particles on a molecular level. Um, and we also know that water, H2O, is a molecule. It consists of two non-metals, and so it, it's a molecular compound. And it, eventually we'll see that it's molecular bonding. So here is the solid structure. It says, these visualizations were created with the CCDC, Mercury Visualization Software, and the crystallographic information file reported by Bernal and Fowler. So just an information. So here is all of the same parts of this structure. Here's what water looks like. It looks like this beautiful array. It looks like it's in a pattern. Um, and there's just like sheets and sheets of it as being patterns. And then when you zoom right in, here's what water looks like. We got oxygen, which is in red, and hydrogen, which is in white. And so in looking at part one, it says, look at the X-ray crystallography image of water. What distinguishing features can you cite? Hmm. Well, looking at them, it looks like water molecules, solid water, kind of arrange in a very specific pattern. So I'll, I'm going to write that down. So for number one, like something that we could distinguish in feature for solid water, I would say um, a specific arrangement or pattern. It's continuous. And you can see that, that it continues to go on and on and on. Um, we can also see that it's just a continuous loop of water, which looks like this, of the water molecule. So I would say it's smallest repeating pattern is water, is the molecule is water molecule. All right, so those are some things that we could note and observe from our solid structure for water. We're gonna be doing this for other types of solids. And so in part two now, while looking at the solid structure handout, and we're mostly, here are all the solid structures, but I have them blown up on the backside. Here are all the solid structures that we're gonna be looking at. Here is a zoomed in version of all of them. We're gonna be looking at each of them, okay? It says, while looking at the solid structure handout, complete the table below for the solids listed. Specifically, you're looking for the types of particles. Is it ions, atoms, or molecules? The connections between those particles, T connected throughout, S connected only in some directions, no connected, uh, no connections between particles. So we'll say T is connected throughout. So every particle is connected. S connected only in some direction. So some of them are connected, some are not. No connections or N. So we're gonna keep that in mind. So we got types of solid connections. For connections, we could say it's T, S, or N. Um, and identify the type of solid that best describes each row. Write a brief, a brief statement summarizing what the solids in each row have in common. Okay. All right, so we're gonna do that, and we're gonna start with row one. Now, if you want, you could do this on your own and then pause the video and, go, and come back to it later, where you look at each row of solids. So here are all the solids. Um, the rows are actually identified here, but here are all the solids kind of overlaid together, and we can kind of see some patterns, or we can kind of see um, 
a comparison of all nine of our solids here. But let's actually start with row one solids, which are argon, copper, and graphite. Okay, argon is the element symbol AR, copper is just Cu, graphite is just carbon. Graphite's just a bunch of carbon atoms. Okay, so let's look at the first one. So row one, argon, type of particles in the solid. Is it atoms, molecules, ions, metal, nonmetal? So argon is group eight of the periodic table. Those are all nonmetals. And it looks like my single repeating pattern here is an atom. Look at all of them. The single most repeating pattern here is argon. So we're going to say that the type of particle is non-metal atoms is the repeating pattern or the types of particles in the solid. Connections within and between the particles. A connection would be something like this that we see in copper. There are no connections. They're not connected anywhere, meaning there's no line or touching between the particles. So we're going to say no. And then generalization concerning particle types and connections. Um, it looks like we have just a bunch of non-metals existing here. So that's kind of my description here. Generalization. So identify the type of solid that best describes each row. Write a brief statement summarizing what the solids are. So it looks like non-metal element. That's my atom. That would be a generalization, right? So this is non-metal. It's just a bunch of of the element argon. This is the element argon, and they're all atoms. Let's look at the next one. We have copper. Copper, we know, is a transition metal, and it looks like the single most repeating pattern, even though it looks like they're all connected, we're going to talk about that next, the single most repeating pattern is metal atom. And then, are there connections? Yes. Throughout, or T, there are all connections throughout. Everything is connected. It's continuously connected. And if I were to even zoom out, I would have all connections all throughout. Generalization, this is a metal element. And we got an atom. And then graphite, we got some connections. There's no connections here. I'm going to kind of put a line here. There's no connections between the sheets, but we have... I'm going to call them, they're kind of sheets of carbon. There are some connected and some are not. So I'm going to put S. Some are connected. And we got non-metal atoms, because carbon is a non-metal. Um, and this is graphite. Graphite's found in most pencils. And it's actually just a bunch of sheets of carbon that are all connected, but like they overlay each other, right? They're not all connected throughout. So generalization, we got non-metal element. Um, a generalization, basically we have elements. All of these that are in common are element, and they're atoms of elements. So row one consists of some sort of elements that are atoms connected or not. All right, so that's going to be the beginning of us recognizing row one solids. These are three different types of solids. We're eventually going to put a label to them. But row one consists of just elements. Let's look at row two now. Row two, we start with dry ice, right? So it looks like the type of particle in the solid, CO2, remember our particle words, if I have two or more, that's molecule. So we have molecules and they're all c and o are non-metals so we got non-metal molecules all non-metals um i would say they're just connected to themselves they're not connected to each other um i would say no connections between particles there are no connections between particles otherwise there would be a line between here okay um, generalization, I'm going to say molecules, molecules of a compound, because CO2 is a compound, okay, all right, next thing, sulfur, now this is S8, 
S8. This would technically be a, um, we're going to, not instead of it being like a diatomic element, it's going to be like a polyatomic element, not an ion. Because it just consists of sulfur. Sulfur is not mixed with anything else. It's just sulfur. So this is technically an element. So we're going to make a note here that it's sulfur. Um, sulfur is non-metal, and it's definitely still, if you look at them, there's more than one atom connected to itself. So this is still technically a molecule. It's molecules of an element. So non-metal molecules. Are there connections? There are no connections between particles. Um, and I'm going to say molecules of an element. So right now we have molecules of element or compound. And then finally we got our last one. We got sugar. We got sugar. Um, here are each sets of molecules. Actually, there's only three of them here. One, two, three. It's big. Okay. They are not connected to each other. And these are molecules. And they all consist of non-metals. So non-metal molecules. There are no connections. Um, and it looks like it's molecules of a compound. And trying to think of a common between them, common ground between them, some sort of um, generalization. It looks like they're all molecules. And going back to this one, we have a, a, a generalization also. there were, We couldn't do a generalization with elements about connections, but we could do a generalization with connections. Molecules not connected. So now we have elements are kind of our generalization for row one type of solids. Molecules that are not connected are the generalization for our row two type of solids. The last one I'll do in this video, and then I'll have a part two for the rest of this, is our row three solids. Looks like we got some ionic compounds here. We have, Let's look at table salt first. So the type of particle in table salt looks like Na and Cl. Each of these are ions. We got Na plus Cl minus. So we got metal, non-metal ions. Connections. Oh, they are connected all throughout. Throughout. Yes, they are all connected. Um, and it looks like ionic compound. Ionic compound is a generalization for this right now. Uh, then we'll go to marble. We got metal and non-metals. We got polyatomic ion. We got Ca2 plus and CO3 2 minus. I'm going to say, if you can't see it, this white thing is Ca2 plus, and the green and the blue are CO3, and I know that's going to be 2 minus. So marble, we got metal, non-metal ions. They are connected indefinitely throughout. You can see that they have all connections. They're all touching each other. Connections throughout. And a generalization is ionic compound right now. And then the last one, we got baking soda. Again, same thing. We got ions. We got sodium, positive one charge, bicarbonate, HCO3 minus one. We know that this has a polyatomic ion because there are three or more symbols. And you could see, if you can't see it, that sodium is the white. The purple and, and red are bicarbonate. All connected throughout. So I could write that down here. We have metal and non-metal ions throughout. And again, we have ionic compound. So we'll end with this generalization in this video. It looks like the generalization is ionic compounds that are all connected, all connected, because there's a generalization there, connected throughout. 
In the next video, we're going to go on to the back of this activity and try and come up with rules for identifying types of solids. And we're going to put a name to these types of solids. So be on the lookout for the next video to complete this activity on distinguishing ionic, molecular, and atomic solids.